Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to my last video of 2016, which of course is my best and worst books of 2016. Uh, I haven't read as many books as I did in 2015. Back then I read about 34 books, but this year was crazy and hectic for me. This was the most hectic year that I've had until so far, but I will probably say the same thing next year because then I'll be going to university. So. That will be stressful as well, but this year I was able to read 25 books. I might be able to finish my last book today, but I'm not too sure. But I just wanted to show you guys my worst and best books of 2016 because 2016 was kind of a meh reading year for me. I haven't really given that much five star readings to books, but that doesn't matter. I still have four star books here on my on my little pile that I have here, but that doesn't mean that those weren't the best books that I've read this year. I'm not gonna start with my favorite best books of 2016. I'm gonna start with my worst books of 2016. So all of these books I gave two out of five stars because I did see some elements in them that I enjoyed, but I mean, I've never given a book a one-star rating. I feel like if you give a book a one-star rating, it has to be the absolute worst. You haven't enjoyed anything about it, but in these books, I did find some elements that I enjoyed, but mostly I didn't. So the first one that I have to show here is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. And I was extremely excited to read this book because first, look at how extremely beautiful this is. It is the Macmillan Alice 150 Years edition. It is so pretty. And this is my absolute favorite color, blue and the little hearts it just looked so cute. And I was very intrigued by the story because I love Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, like the, the Disney DVD thing. But this was just completely not that. It was very confusing. It was mostly just telling instead of showing and it was just boring. I think that this is my most disappointing read of 2016 and it is The Warrior Heir by Cinda Williams Chima. So I've heard great things about this author. She has written amazing fantasy series. Um, so I was very intrigued to start this one because two years ago when I started watching booktube, this was extremely popular because this was the book explosion of the month book and I was very intrigued by the story. Um, this is sort of like a boy who never knew that he had magical powers discovers that he has magical powers but I read 300 out of the 400 pages and still nothing that exciting happened so it was a very boring book and yeah it was very boring and I thought that this was gonna be epic so I'm kind of hesitant to pick up uh, her other books in the Seven Realms series I believe it's called don't quote me on that but that is why I picked this one up I just really wanted to read a Cindy Williams Chima book but this one let me down so I don't know if I should pick up her other books maybe if her other series is so much better than this series just let me know in the comments down below because yeah I've heard so many great things about her I just want to enjoy her books as well I think this is my number two on my most disappointing books of this year and that is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. Everyone told me that this was a magical read and it was so pretty and beautiful and it did involve like magical realism so it was magical in some sort of way but I found it very confusing and I didn't know what was happening in the story. I did not like it because it was so confusing for me. Uh, so again, disappointing. And then the last disappointing book that I have to show you guys is You Know Me Well by David Levithan and Nina LaCour. And again, I was extremely excited to read this book because I got an early ARC copy through NetGalley and this was my first book that I read through NetGalley. And the story sounded really interesting. These two gay teens were helping each other out with their true love and it just sounded really cute and amazing. But the two gay main characters, they formed a friendship in four days that I haven't even achieved in seven years with someone. So they were calling each other best friend and they already met their parents and it was so unrealistic and um, the girl who was lesbian, also her love interest, it just came out of nowhere. She already loved her before she had even seen her. So uh, again, unrealistic. The only character that I liked was the character that I think David Levithan wrote and that was Mark. I really liked his character and every time I had to uh, read the other story from the girl's perspective, I don't know what her name is anymore. I think it was Katie. I was like, ugh, not her again. So right now all the disappointing books are gone and let's start with my favorite books of 2016. I'm so excited to show you guys all the books that I loved this year. So the first two books are by Colleen Hoover. I've got Ugly Love and It Ends With Us. These two books 
I mean, all of Colleen Hoover's books until so far are so addicting. I love them so much. Her writing style, you just, oh, you just get in the story so easily and the characters are amazing and the stories are so touching and addicting. Did I say addicting again? I think I gave Ugly Love a four out of five stars, but I would give it maybe even more. And I think I gave It Ends With Us a four and a half out of five stars. But right now I'm like, which one did I enjoy more? I definitely want to read even more Colleen Hoover in 2017 because I just love her so much. So I have two more of her books standing on my shelves and I will be reading them in 2017. Then a book that I read very early in the year is Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton. I was just looking on Amazon and then I saw this cover and this is also my favorite cover of the year. Year. I love it so much and I definitely regret not buying the hardcover because this is my favorite cover of all time. It's just so extremely gorgeous. Um, so I stumbled on this book because of the cover. I'm sorry, I do look at covers. And then I saw the price and it was only seven euros. Then I read the story and I was hooked, so I bought it. This is a story about a girl called Amani Alhiza and she has been living with her aunt and uncle for a good chunk of her life in this really boring town and she just wants to escape the town. So when she meets a very mysterious stranger, a foreigner, she goes with him on this journey and oh it's so good and I really want to reread this again before the sequel Traitor to the Throne which is a tongue twister comes out I already pre-ordered the book uh, I really want to reread this one again to refresh my mind it was so good so so good definitely read this one if you haven't yet oh it's such a good one this book I finished in five days and it was pretty big so that means that I pretty much enjoyed it and it is City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. I have never read the Mortal Instruments series and I also haven't continued with it yet and I've only read this one but it was just so good. It was so good. I could not stop reading it. Uh, I was addicted to it. I was addicted to it. It did take me 100 pages to really get into it but I read those 100 pages in one day. I love this group of characters so much. I am very intrigued by the world and I really like Cassandra Clare's writing style. So first I want to read the rest of the Mortal Instruments series and then I want to read The Infernal Devices and then I want to read Lady Midnight. So I still have a ton of books to go but this one is one of my favorites of this year. But then a book about people that I've never read about and it is The Art of Being Normal by Lisa Williamson. This book is about transgender people and this was an eye-opening novel. I loved it so much. Not that I didn't know about transgender transgender people before but I feel like people who don't really understand transgender people should read this one. It is really good and eye-opening. So in this book you follow two main characters, David who is a boy and who wants to be a girl. His best friends know but he just doesn't know how to tell his parents. And then you have Leo who transfers to the same school as David but Leo has a secret and he doesn't want anyone to know about it. It's so good and I cannot wait for Lisa Williamson's other book which is coming out in 2017 to come out. I, I want to read it so bad. I don't know what it's about but I know I'm gonna get it. Then I have two books by the same author that I read this year that I absolutely love but especially like one in particular. It is A Court of Thorns and Roses and especially A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas. I know this is super cliche because everyone loved this book in 2016 but I do think that it's one of my ultimate favorites and The Dust Jacket is almost coming out. Uh, I'm just gonna hold up this book because it's so good. It is humongous though, but I read this in two weeks and it is 600 and something pages, but I love Perithian, I love Feyre, I love Resand, I just love all of these characters so much and oh, it's so, so good. If you haven't picked this book up yet or A Court of Thorns and Roses, just read them. Just read them. And if you don't enjoy A Court of Thorns and Roses, I've heard that people who didn't enjoy that book loved A Court of Mist and Fury. And before A Court of Wings and Ruin, book number three comes out in May, which is my most anticipated release of 2017, I will be rereading this book. Oh, my heart. Another contemporary book that I absolutely adored in 2016 is Amy and Roger's Epic Detour by Morgan Matson. This is the second book that I read by Morgan Matson, and I cannot wait to read more of her because I love her writing style so much. And this was the cutest book 
ever. So in this book, we follow Amy who has to ride her car across America, but she doesn't really want to because she lost her dad in a car accident. And so her mother says, okay, just do it with Roger. And Roger is her like boy next door. And they go on this adorable road trip. You have tons of different things in it. You have playlists. Okay, you cannot really see it. Never mind. You have playlists, pictures, receipts, everything. If you haven't read this book by Morgan Matson, definitely pick it up, especially during the summertime because this will make you feel even more like summery and it will prepare you, I think, for the summer. And then the last book that I have to show you guys or show on the screen is Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince by J.K. Rowling. I still haven't read Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, but I'm sort of like shoving it back. I just don't want the series to end. But then again, I do because I just want to be able to say that I finally read the Harry Potter series. Uh, but this book, I think it was my least favorite out of them until so far. I'm not too sure. I still loved it though. I gave it a five out of five stars, but if I had to choose which one I did not love the most, uh, it's so hard. I just, I don't know guys. I don't know. But again, this was just really good and sad. I cried so much. This is definitely the book that I cried the hardest with and uh, most of you guys know I'm not gonna say for the people who haven't read the Harry Potter series as well. So it's again one of my favorite reads of 2016. So those were all the books that I had to show you guys. I just wanted to say thank you so much for this amazing 2016. Um, well for most people it wasn't an amazing year but for me it was just it was another year. Um, but this year I got most of my subscribers that I have right now so I just wanted to say thank you all for joining me on this YouTube journey. I hope that in 2017 you will stick with me and maybe some new people will be coming to me as well. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. I hope you all have a great New Year's Eve and I will see you guys in 2017. Bye! <laughs>